So the um, shoulder orthopedic test, first thing, again, observe, make sure to find the location. A lot of times uh, people who um, have a fracture in the clavicles, and if they don't heal uh, correctly, it, you're going to see displacement of the clavicles. So it's really important to kind of take a look at the clavicle. The anatomy itself, uh, sternal clavicle joint, and then going into um, a chromial clavicle joint, those two joints often get dis um, dislocated, so make sure to kind of pay little attention. The first thing is that if there's a sulcus sign, if and the shoulder itself is dislocated, then you will actually see a little depression right after the chromium. Sometimes you can do is that you can also push the arm down to see. You see there's a, a chromium like right there, there's a line. If there is dislocation, you will even see further down. So sometimes this is like the patient come in with a sulcus sign, or sometimes you'll just do a little bit pulling down and you will see the sulcus sign. Another test that you can do is a uh, Dargas test. Um, Dargas is ask the patient to actually bring this hand to this shoulder. If they have somebody have the frat, uh, dislocated shoulder, they're not going to be able to do that. Another thing that you need to uh, see is that you need to ask the patient where is the pain, if there is a pain. They might note it right on the SC joint, a chromioclavicular joint. By doing this, you're putting a little bit of stress into that joint and they might note it. Uh, there's a pain, uh, pain. If that's the case, that's more for like a, uh, there's a little irrita irritation, inflammation right at the SC joint. Okay. And uh, other tests, drop arm test, you can bring the arm a little bit on the abduction all the way and then slowly bring it down. But what I'll do is that I usually hold my hands a little bit lower and ask the patient to slowly bring it down. And if it is a positive, so this is negative, if it is positive, bring it up and ask the patient to slowly bring it down. All of a sudden, it's going to drop. And you might want to catch that, and then patient cannot do that. I mean, they cannot slowly bring it down because the possibility that is tear in some of the rotator cuffs. Um, another test that you can do, main muscle for the rotator cuff is supraspinatus. So you bring this in and then ask the patient to hold it, hold it this position. And then try to resist, just try to bring it up. And if this is weak, then you're isolating the supraspinatus. The supraspinatus is, is called scapula angle. So scapula is a little bit of an angle, so you want to bring it, not a straight abduction, you want to bring it anterior about 30 degree or so. Rotate it, internally rotate it, hold it, don't let me push it down, and then do the muscle test. Good, that's for the supraspinatus. Um, Apple scratch, you can also do it, this is for like frozen shoulder, ask the patient how far they can kind of do the external rotation right there, and then also the internal rotation back here, and see how much they can really um, touch on the back. So that's how you stand up. And then for this one, let's do the Apple scratch. So here on the right side, see how much of the external rotation, and then how much of the internal rotation. And that's what you're checking for. Okay, go ahead and sit. Um, neo impingement. Neo impingement can happen depends on the shape of the acromion and also two muscle that it's probably um, uh, involved, supraspinatus and also the bicep. You can just bring this up passively and see if there's any pain or not, in, right in the front usually. Or if the passively doesn't cause any pain, just ask the patient to go ahead and bring it up and see actively and see if there's any uh, pain. With the active contraction of the muscle, a lot of times it will um, cause more impingement. That's, gonna, that's a near impingement test. Speed test is muscle test for the bicep. So bring it in. A lot of times it's better to have the elbow extended and then just resist. And then you're checking for the bicep right there. So this will be positive for like bicep tendinitis. Another test that you can do for the bicep uh, tendinitis is the Lippmann test. You will hold it, first kind of try to locate. This is a um, coracoid process, the short head and then there will be a long head. And then what you want to do is that you want to act, place your hand and then just passively just move it internally and externally rotate. Just kind of move it and see if there's any pain. A lot of times the patient will note it there's a pain with external and internal rotation. 
there is transverse humeral ligament right on top, right here, right on top of this uh, bicep tendon. And sometimes that could be a rupture and causing a little bit of inflammation. To confirm that um, if there is transverse ligament it is rupture or not, one of the tests you can do, do is the Jorgensen. Ask the patient from this position, move out all the way this position. Okay? So I want you to move from here to here. Okay? And then I'm going to resist. You will kind of palpate right on the bicep tendon area or observe. Go ahead. Push, and then you resist. By doing this, you are contracting quite a bit of bicep and then putting a little bit of stress on the, right on the tendon. So if there is the rupture, you will see the tendon move out. Okay, one more time. Or if they will note it, they will note it that there is pain right on the ten, uh, tendon for the bicep. Uh, Subacromial push button. So those are like more for the bursitis. There's a multiple bur bursa on the shoulder. The acromion and the subacromion bursitis, you just kind of palpate around this area on the, right on the acromion to see if there is any pain. Another test that you can do to kind of confirm for the um, bursitis is uh, Dalbarn's test. Dalbarn's test is that there is a pain right now, and then from here, you raise the passively, passively go ahead and relax, the AB duct, abduct. And if the pain goes away, that's positive. Means that there is a pain, there's an inflammation, and then you bring up the AB duct, and now the muscles um, kind of relax and there's more space. So if there's a bursitis, it will decrease the pain. Um, another test that you want to do for the shoulder is apprehension test. You want to bring the arm up and then apply the force posterior to anterior and you're stretching the anterior um, shoulder joint, like shoulder capsule. And the person who have dislocated shoulder in the past, this will be um, a little bit painful. So make sure to observe their face and making your face, you okay? Faces, then a lot of times um, you will notice that there is possibility of dislocation uh, in the past and joint instability. Um, another test that you can do for the joint insta instability itself is uh, drawers test. So you can do from in this seated position, you can do the anterior drawers test and posterior drawers test. You want to just kind of hold it right on the like humeral, like on the shoulder, humeral head area, and then just do anterior, just kind of push anterior, posterior, push back. And you can do this also laying down. Go ahead, lay on your back. How do you fit this way? So one way that you can do is that you want to hold it on the, like a, in the front and the shoulder and then this will be anterior drawers test. You, you're basically pulling anterior and then again you hold it the post, posterior drawer will be like pushing down. So you can do anterior, anterior drawers test, posterior drawers test. Okay, um, let's see, let's have you sit up. Last test that we, we want to do is actually, um, sometimes it's better to do it uh, lay down, but uh, for the labrum tear, you will kind of bring it up all the way, and then you want to actually push from the back, P to A. And when you do that, you will feel like a clunk clunk, you hear the clunk clunk, and you'll feel like kind of motion of the shoulder joint itself. The labrum is also, the bicep long head attached to the superior part of the labrum. So what it is that you if you bring the arm all the way on the A reduction all the way. And if there's a pain, this is another test that you can do for the labrum. What you want to do is that you want to flex the elbow. And a lot of times if the pain goes away, that's a higher chance the labrum is involved. Labrum uh, clunk test by the version of a supine, go ahead on your back. What you want to do is that you want to actually bring this up, like, just like a seated position, bring it up and then slide your hand and then just kind of push from P to A and just kind of move it here to try to kind of have a motion on the joint. The labrum is the one like a connective tissue that holding the uh, humeral head. So if you really torque it, you will kind of cause a little bit of pain there. I think uh, that's it for the shoulder joint.